Oh man, hair's getting long, hair's getting long. I might have to cut it myself this time. I know, first world problems, right? Anyway, I'm drinking this Avery beer. It's a double, double digit hazy IPA, Imperial Juicy IPA from Avery Brewing Co. Very delicious, and I need it. I need it right now, I'm not gonna lie, I'm not gonna lie. Mm. I want this to kind of be in an hopefully informative and serious talk, uh, and just to kind of state my opinions. Again, I'm not a health expert, but I love, I'm a science and data guy. I'm a, I love health, I like talking about health, and I like talking about how it relates to your running. And with this coronavirus outbreak, especially here in the U.S., it's really hit home. Uh, Colorado is actually one of the worst states in the U.S. And I'm going to get into some of the details there. What you could do to hopefully stay healthy, what you could do if your race was canceled or postponed. I know, you know, Boston Marathon, London Marathon, looking at fall dates, uh, as well as just lifestyle things uh, that I've been taking into account and maybe being a hypocrite on. But I just wanted to, to let you know, I hope you guys are doing well. Hope you're staying safe. Hope you're hunkered down. Uh, we'll get into that hashtag social distancing, exponential growth. Uh, Avery Brewing, actually, a good example. Here in Boulder, Colorado, obviously sponsored by them. It's a strong beer. Um, not gonna let it talk for me too much, hopefully, here, but they closed down. They closed down their whole tap room. They closed down their whole restaurant last Friday, I believe. And, uh, you know, not to be a hypocrite here, we actually went for a little weekend trip out to a small mountain town uh, in Colorado. Stayed in a hotel, tried to stay away from people. We're out on the trails, mainly at altitude, enjoying the company of a few uh, close family members. But, you know, I don't think we should be going out anymore. I think it's better to stay home, self-quarantine. I'm healthy, I'm healthy, uh, but I'm not worried about myself. I'm not worried about myself. The whole idea with social distancing, hashtag social distancing, is trying to slow the growth of the spread. So what we see with the spread, COVID-19, is that it's highly contagious. It's highly contagious and symptoms, people that have a compromised immune systems, elderly people, people who have who've had cancer, people who have you know asthma, uh, HIV, things like that, who have compromised immune systems, it could be very deadly. Uh, it could lead to serious hospitalization where you get pneumonia and you can't breathe basically. Uh, and you know the body shuts down and the hospitalization will overwhelm the US healthcare system, right? We have a, I have a really crappy health insurance plan. Don't get me started on that. It's basically catastrophic. We'll put it this way. If I was out on the trails and I fell and I cut myself and I had to go into the doctor and get stitches, it would cost hundreds of dollars USD, probably like $500. I, I, you know, and I have to pay almost that much every month for this protection uh, in case I get in a really serious accident and I ring up tens of thousands of hundreds of dollars USD bills. But anyway, healthcare system very fragile. We don't want to overwhelm the healthcare system, right? If there's all these patients that are getting serious complications from coronavirus, elderly people, people that really need help, respirators, uh, you know, the hospital beds fill up, there's not gonna be enough space for people that get in a car accident or people that, you know, get injured from something else or have an appendicitis or some other unrelated health issue, right? Uh, the health, the whole hospital situation is to be overwhelmed. Now, we're talking about coronavirus, we're talking about exponential growth. Exponential growth, if you don't remember from a math class or, or, yeah, math class, I guess. If you look at a graph and you see the population getting infected with coronavirus, uh, an exponential growth is essentially a curve and it, it, it curves, the curve gets steeper as the population of infected people increases, right? And so what we see with coronavirus, we're looking at a replication factor, or a R naught factor, I guess is what it's called, uh, of R, close to R2 or R3, which means if you are sick and you get, you'll get three other people infected, this is an R3, right? And then those three people get, each one of them get three people infected. So now you're up to nine people, right? Two transmissions, you're up to nine. So it's, it's basically an expo exponent, right? Three squared, three times three. Then you go three times three times three. And then you're up to 27. Then you go three times three times three again. And what we see is after about 10 or 11 iterations of that, you're into 177,000 something, uh, hundreds of thousands of people. So there's a potential very sh quickly in a matter of weeks or months to infect hundreds of thousands of people. And again, with, with coronavirus, the problem is it's, it, you don't get symptoms right away. It takes maybe five, 10 days uh, before you get sick. You get infected and then it's five or six, seven, eight days later, you actually start getting the fever and sore throat or dry cough and these symptoms. Uh, and it's, it's essentially airborne. I'm not, I'm not gonna throw around that term exactly, but you know, water vapor droplets coming out from a cough or sneeze, 
uh, or just talking, just breathing, you're breathing in. So we look at six feet, uh, you know, a little less than two meters of distance for social distancing. People can get contaminated that way, just through water droplets in the air, right? They've done studies with airplane seats and the configuration, uh, air travel, close quarters, uh, basically. Highly contagious on surfaces, right? Water, those vapor droplets that land on surface, you touch the surface, you rub your eye, you touch your nose, you eat some food, uh, boom, you're gonna get infected, right? So it's, it's about washing your hands a lot, trying to stay spaced out. Don't go to mass events where there's a lot of people crowded inside, especially, especially inside. Uh, us as runners, we're worried about, you know, races, not because we're out on the trails and we're spread out and we're running these races, but, you know, you go to major road city marathon, you go to the expo, a lot of people at the expo, right? You're standing on the starting line, everyone's real close together, thousands of people. You go to the, the bar afterwards, or you go to the after party, right? The pasta feed, it's, it's fun, it's fun. And it sucks, it sucks. Like, it's a first world problem though, to realize, oh, my race was canceled. I know you trained for it really hard. I'm in this financially. I'm in this financially as well. I need to race financially. Uh, you know, it's part of my career. It's, it's, you know, frustrating that your race is canceled or your race is postponed. Again, I would keep training. Maybe you could dial things back a little bit. You know, you don't have to taper real soon for a race in the next couple of months, right? Those are all going to be canceled essentially. Uh, and, you know, challenge yourself. Challenge yourself. Try to stay fit. I know some of you are in such dire straits. You're in countries, I believe it was Italy, maybe even Spain. I've heard some people on Instagram where they're quarantined inside and they're not allowed to run outside, even if you live out in the countryside, right? You're not even allowed to go outside because uh, it's like breaking uh, you know, the, the home at home quarantine, right? We have people fighting over toilet paper, drawing knives. Uh, it's bringing out some, some ugly sides of humanity, which I think is really bad. And I'm gonna get into the financial aspect of it as well, the economic downturn uh, that's inevitable in this type of unfortunate situation and realize how, you know, how privileged it is for me to, to be complaining about even things like toilet paper or uh, space to run and train or, or races and events that, you know, you know, I'm going to travel to. I'm not going to travel though, right? We're shutting things down and I think it's everyone's responsibility, especially speak more on, on you know, in America. Uh, we're such a large country. We're such a large population, but also a large size and we have so much diversity in, in not only, well, in lots of ways, economics, but also in viewpoints on things. And if people aren't all cohesive and if people are, all don't, uh, you know, buy into the team mentality here, we're gonna be kind of screwed because people are still going out to big social events. They're still, you know, getting out at, at bars and big crowded arenas. Fortunately, uh, a lot of states have closed down bars and restaurants. I think Colorado probably should. Um, I, and not to be a hypocrite, I still went out to eat, maybe for the last time in a while, at a restaurant last night. And I traveled, we drove in a car, uh, and stayed at a hotel, right? We're in these big social situations. But races have been canceled. Uh, you know, bars and restaurants in several states, four states across the U.S. have been shut down. Uh, it's encouraged that people stay at home, work remotely. Again, I'll get to the economic impact of this obvious economic problems uh, with the market and, and people trying to work at home and you got to take after the kids. The kids aren't in school, right? They shut down schools, uh, colleges, universities, high school, middle school, everything. People are trying to go into distance learning. They're trying to work from home in some occupations. Obviously, that's a lot harder, though, than in others, right? The, our mortgage payment, the bills are going to keep coming in. We didn't get a reduction in, in rent or you know, that payment, right? Didn't get a reduction in healthcare costs every month. That bill's coming in. So costs are building up. Income is dropping because maybe your small business is going to suffer. And that's a hard thing. People that are living near the poverty line in really dire conditions, more likely to get infected, less likely to get access to quick health care, uh, and, and shortages of food. Shortages of food in a place like Boulder. Boulder's a, a pretty, uh, how should I say it? A rich town. It's a pretty affluent town. There's a lot of people, uh, and you, you go to some grocery stores and they're, they're totally out of toilet paper. People are stockpiling stuff, and it, they're not sharing. They're not sharing, and that's the thing that bothers me is we're all in this together. We're all kind of on the same team here, and if everyone just bought a moderate amount of toilet paper, there'd probably be enough to go around. Some people hoard it. And the same thing with hand sanitizer. I couldn't buy hand sanitizer. I just wanted one one little squirt bottle for the road, you know. I usually just use plain old soap and water, hot soap and water, 20 seconds, wash those hands real carefully before you touch anything on your face or eat anything or prepare food. Uh, but you know, when you're out and about in your car, uh, you might want to use some high alcohol content, hand sanitizer, right? It's totally wiped out from a lot of the stores. 
Uh, and it, you know, I don't want to induce like panic or, or dread, but I'm just trying to get to the scientific numbers and the data of why social distancing is so important, why staying in, not going out to crowded bars and restaurants or big social events. They cancel music concerts, of course, as well too. Uh, sporting events, right? The whole college NCAA season for track, for basketball, NBA basketball. You know, shutting it down. Soccer, all the big sports, right? Uh, and I think it's smart. I think it's smart, and I think it's necessary because. We want to slow that exponential growth, right? Flatten the curve. Hashtag again, flatten the curve. This is all based in science and modeling. It's a numbers game. It's a sheer numbers game. And for those unfortunate people, you know, I'm not worried about myself. I, I don't want to get it. I don't want to hurt my lungs, right? But, you know, if I happen to spread it to some other people, to some little kids, to some elderly people, and they have complications or died from it, I feel pretty bad. I feel pretty bad, right? I have great aunts and great uncles and uh, you know, people I know that are very near and dear to me in their 70s, 80s, even 90s, uh, people with compromised immune systems who are going through chemotherapy or something like that, it's a very serious issue uh, for trying to prevent the spread to people who have weakened immune systems, right? We're trying to save lives here. Very serious business. I'd rather err on the side of caution and, and not risk it, right? If you have the financial means to stay at home, work remotely, uh, you know, take care of the kids somehow. I know, you know, people depend on that kids going to school. Kids depend on that school lunch, right? For those meals at public schools in the U.S. at least. Uh, it's a tough problem, right? Small businesses, restaurants having to close down shop because they're not going to have patrons, right? They're not going to have people in the bars. And, you know, that's a tough financial reality. The market's going all turbulent, right? Stock market. I don't know much about that. I'm not going to talk about that. But, it's going to be a tough time. We're all going to have to buckle down. And if we're all we're all on the same team, right? We don't want to get sick. We don't want people to suffer. Uh, we don't want the healthcare system to get overrun. So if we all just try to work together and do our best, we all have to do some sort of part, even if the virus is far away from us, right? It probably isn't, though. It probably isn't because they're reporting these cases. Oh, you know, there's 200 cases in Colorado, la, da, da. There's probably way more than that, right? People aren't recognizing symptoms right away. People are walking around contagious. People are getting infected all the time. They don't have enough test kits in a lot of areas. So people aren't getting tested right away. The number's way lower than what the actual number probably is. And it, again, the exponential growth, you're infecting people very quickly. We wanna try to slow and flatten that curve uh, and try to bring it down. And hopefully, hopefully the ideas in the Northern Hemisphere in the Southern months uh, it hopefully will go down as well. But if we don't take drastic measures right now and really buckle down and stop all travels, all unnecessary travel, not go to crowded places, practice social distancing, up our hygiene with hand washing, uh, reduce our trips even to the supermarket and the store, reduce things like, I'm not gonna get my hair cut, uh, boo hoo, um, reduce things like just, yeah, not gonna go to the gym. You know, all the ski resorts in Colorado got closed down as well. So, you know, maybe I'll go backcountry skiing out in the wilders, I don't know. Uh, you know, can't ski, can't go to the gym for sure, you know, but you wanna stay sane, you gotta stay motivated. If you're exercising a bit, still running a bit, that's really good. Again, I would rail back things. Maybe you could, you know, train hard. Maybe you have more time to train. I don't know. It could be good. It could be good to find a hobby indoors in your own apartment or house. Um, I'm going to be doing more of that. Maybe some more music videos. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's a tough hit financially. And, you know, people buy our training plans or training for the Boston Marathon. It gets postponed till the fall. Uh, you know, dial things back, reset, reestablish aerobic base work on your weaknesses, but realize that all that hard work you did over the winter in those months, it's gonna pay off later down the road, right? You, everything you do in distance running, it kind of pays off into the future, right? You might not recognize those benefits right away, but it's totally worth it for the future. So stay healthy, uh, stay hydrated, try to practice social distancing. I can't emphasize how important that is. I'm not gonna be going out to eat as much, if at all. Maybe I'll get some food delivery, Still, you're at the, the risk of, of whoever made your food contaminating it. I don't know, maybe we could microwave it. Check out a really informative article. Some of the best resources I've seen is actually on the running website, irunfar.com. I run far, they cover trail running news. They got a bunch of scientists, runners together to collaborate on this really informative article. It's not a super long read, it's got pictures, 
It's really good. It's one of the best ones I've seen. So check that out, Iron Far. I'll link to it in the description below. Again, not a doctor, not a medical ex expert. These are my opinions, but we all have to work together, I believe, to try to beat this and to reduce the rate of spread, try to lower that R factor, get things down, try to get things back to normal. Uh, and it's going to be a tough battle. It's going to take everyone doing, changing their lifestyle drastically. And I know it's, it's surreal to say it's kind of crazy, but again, I'd rather be on the, the side of caution and to do things very conservatively in this, this sense, to not have a, a really bad spread of this to overwhelm the healthcare system. Thanks for listening to my rant. Again, hope you're staying healthy, hope you're doing well. I know I really feel for some of you who are quarantined already who can't even get outside and run. I believe fresh air is still gonna be really good, especially if you could stay away from people uh, out in the wilderness. It's gonna be really good. Eating healthy food, still trying to, you know, it's harder when you can't shop as much at the supermarkets, but you know, limit exposure there, get what you need necessary, cook at home lot, stay in, stay healthy. Thanks again for subscribing on here. Hope your running's going well. Hope your living and eating's going well and hope you are staying healthy. Comment below with any uh, suggestions or things you think that I might have said wrong. Again, I don't want to spread false information. There's a lot of false information out there uh, about you know, all sorts of conspiracies and not good stuff in my book. Uh, science and numbers and data is what I like. Uh, again, we're trying to keep people healthy. We're trying to keep people uh, living a higher quality of life. So, you know, spread the good word with health and fitness. Again, uh, hope you're doing well. Stay tuned for more.